listening to season six of the Devoted Dreamers podcast, where we talk about our God-shaped dreams. I'm your host, Merit Onsa, and in this new season, I want more than ever to point you to God's truth to help you move from uncertainty to action in your God-shaped dream. We will begin each episode with stories of women just like you who have learned to listen to that still small voice of God, who have found the courage to take their next step and have trusted him along the way. But you need to know that this show isn't about hustle or doing more, working harder or being better. Nobody needs more of that. This show is about experiencing God's grace and learning his love for us in the midst of the labors, dreams, and ambitions he's given us, and all the challenges that come hand in hand with those. So whether you're starting out, or maybe even feeling like the years of dreaming are beginning to run out, whatever your dream and the doubts you're battling along the way, you need to know God sees you. And there's a beautiful passage in Ephesians 1 that I keep coming back to, where our gracious Father reminds you that you were created and chosen for a purpose in order that you might live for the praise of his glory. So whatever might be standing in the way of your dream, whether that's something deep inside of you or something external, God has a plan for you, his daughter, and he is with you in it. And I pray that you will know those truths a little deeper today as a result of this conversation. You can always connect with me and the other listeners in my Facebook group or via my Instagram at Merit J-O or as a patron of the show. Everything you need to know, including the show notes, can be found on my website at MeritOnsa.com. And now here's today's episode. Real quick, before we get into today's interview, I just want to pause and acknowledge this moment and welcome you to season six of the Devoted Dreamers podcast. You know, when I began down this road of podcasting in 2016, I had no idea I'd make it to three years and 120 plus interviews. And I say that to you because wherever you are with your dream right now, you cannot fathom what God will do in the next three years, or even in the next one year. So whatever you might be feeling today about your God-shaped dream, and I will say this from experience, you will very likely feel different one year from today. So I'm going to challenge you right here, right now, if the feelings you have about your dream are hard or scary or fearful, consider how you might just put them aside. Let them go. I'm not saying bury them. Acknowledge them for sure. Tell a friend, talk to a mentor, for sure talk to God about them. But then move forward anyway. In my opinion, it's how every great dream has ever come to fruition. And in the next few months, I'm creating a Bible study to help combat some of those feelings, some of the things that we all kind of wrestle with in our God-shaped dreams. So please stay tuned and keep an eye out and ear out for that. I cannot wait to tell you more about it. And I want you to know, in the meantime, what a burden I feel for you and dreamers like you. There is so much in this world that wants to hold you back from who God created you to be, but that's not what he wants for you. He wants freedom for you and joy and rest in him. And I'm here. This is a bit of a mission statement for me. I'm here doing this work, pursuing my own dreams, because I long to see God's love set you free from the feelings that have kept you stuck over the years in order that your life might sing the song he planted in you before the beginning of time. I pray that these episodes I've been working on for season six will point you in that direction towards that freedom. Please, please feel free to reach out to me anytime you have questions, want to have a dialogue about any of this stuff that we're talking about here on the podcast, or if you just need a little encouragement, 
it would be a joy to walk with you through and toward your dream. Okay, now here's today's conversation with the lovely Heather Borsma. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed talking with her. Hello, Devoted Dreamers, and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 120. can hardly believe that number, but I am talking today with Heather Oh gosh, Heather, I did not ask how to pronounce your last name. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Borsma. Borsma. I was going to butcher it. Okay, Borsma. So this is Heather, um, listeners, and I'm so excited to introduce you to her today. If you are not familiar with her, she has just launched a book a couple months ago called Letters from a Big Sister, and she is a speaker, an author, a life coach. She lives in Canada and has spent the last 12 years speaking to teen girls and women um, across Canada and the U.S. And this is her second book that she's published and can't wait for her to tell you about her passion and the God-shaped dream in her heart. Welcome, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad we finally connected since you reached out to me almost a year ago. <laughs> yes, it was, this was the time, I guess. <laughs> yes, it was about this time. So congrats on your new book. That's really fun. Thank you. Um, can you just start us off talking about the dream that God has placed in your heart for what you would do with your life? Yes, I would love to share about that. Um, when I was about 19 years old, I went to Bible school in New Zealand and then traveled in Australia afterwards for a few months. And I met this pastor at one of these little churches in Australia, a little beach church. And Mm. he asked me to share about my time at Bible school. And so I got up in front of his small congregation and shared. And after I got off the stage, he prayed for me and he just said, you know, Heather, you're, you're gifted to communicate the truth of God's word and the kingdom and you you shouldn't stop until you're speaking in front of thousands of people. And I was like, what? This is not <laughs> on my radar. This is not something I'd ever thought of before or even had really a context for. But that really planted a dream in my heart that I have been um, walking out ever since. And I I feel called and passionate to communicate the truth of the kingdom in creative ways to both the church and also to uh, those who don't yet know Jesus. So that is my passion. I love it. And so will you talk a little bit about some of the creative ways that you have been doing that already? Sure. So I have had some really cool opportunities to partner with different ministries on speaking tours. I have had the opportunity to write and host a television show for teen girls. And recently, uh, as you were sharing, I published my second book, which is called Letters from a Big Sister. And um, aside from that, I've also done, you know, a little bit of life coaching. I've done some online classes, basically any anything where I get to communicate in a creative way or through some kind of different format is, it seems to be that's the path that I've been on. That's awesome. Um, what's kind of your favorite way to communicate or is it just that you like the different options? My favorite is to be on a stage in front of a large group of people, or it doesn't even have to be a large, just a a live audience. That is my absolute Mm. favorite. Um, The rush and the energy and the life that that gives me is there's nothing that I've experienced that compares to that. Um, But something that has changed in my heart over the last few years is feeling like that's the most impactful way that I can communicate. And what I've realized is that What I really want to impart to people is significance, is a message of significance and value. And I don't know that me being up on a stage with everybody watching me actually imparts that significance in the most effective way. Um, Mm. For me, I've I've started to realize the most effective way that I can communicate that is one-on-one, which is why life coaching has become a part of um, what I'm pursuing now. Those one-on-one conversations, um, they they are so life-changing for me and the person that I'm talking to. 
Um, and they're so life giving as well. So that's become kind of a new favorite for me. I'm encouraged by that. And, um, just as you said that, like, yeah, standing on a stage where people are listening to you, (laughs) it's like, well, there's a great message here. Yeah. Then what? Yeah. Yeah. When, when you get to walk with someone one-on-one, you get to kind of be a part of that transformation and watching it happen and speaking into it. And when you're on stage, you don't get that because you don't know the impact. I think it's still very impactful, but yeah. um, I I don't know. I've just come to have a value for the one-on-one like I didn't before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I kind of feel that a little bit too with podcasting. Like mm-hmm. I know that there's people out there that have amazing stories of what God's doing in their lives. And this is such a one-way mode of communication. So not that it's bad. It's just like, hmm. Okay. Let me ponder that. So you've given me things to think about. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so what, as far as, um, as you've pursued this dream and, um, I love how it came to you in prayer from someone that you didn't even really know. Mm -hmm. Um, But what have been kind of some of the struggles as you've stepped out and said yes to doing this? The biggest struggle has been that there's no roadmap for how to Mm -hmm. do this. Um, in, In some ways, I've wished that I was just called to be like a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, some profession that's very clear. There's like a path. You go to school for this many years and then you do this internship and then you get this job and you're you're doing it. Um, whereas this calling feels a lot more vague and my path to get there feels somewhat unclear. Um, so I think I'm always evaluating what the next step is and trying to both strategize, but also really listen for how God is leading me next and trust that even when the path looks like it's winding and going maybe even the opposite direction that I think it should, that he is still um, using all of that to bring me into the fullness of what he has for me. And also to realize that there's a fullness right now in this present moment as well, Mm -hmm. even if it doesn't look like... um, everything that I dreamed in some ways it is. So I think it's also just being, being aware of the fullness of the present. And I I think what you said about like the path that you're on requires incredible trust because Mm -hmm. there's not really a finish line. (laughs) It's like, you don't really know when you're done. Yeah. It's like, Lord, okay, what's next? How can I trust you more? And every time I ask him, like, what's the next step? He always gives me the same answer. And I find it sometimes a little bit frustrating. (laughs) But he always tells me, he always tells me the next step is always intimacy. Always. Mm. Every single time, whenever you're at a crossroads, whenever you're trying to decide to go left or right or, you know, that it's always intimacy. It's always like come close to me listen for my voice, um, be at rest in my love. And in that space, I will show you what's next. I think that's great. Just counsel for all of us who are pursuing a dream that feels a little bit nebulous. Like we're not sure, like you said, Mm -hmm. there's not a roadmap. So, Mm -hmm. um, I am fairly certain that would be his answer to all of us Mm -hmm. (laughs) is that, that the, what we do next lies in our intimacy with him and that we really can't hear that if we're distracted by the world. Yeah. And I mean, that's why Jesus had that rhythm, right? Of going out and then coming back into solitude. And he said he didn't do anything, but what he saw the father doing and didn't say anything, but what he heard the father saying, well, how would he be able to see and hear those things if it wasn't for the stillness and the pulling away and the going into quiet and, and listening for that voice. And you and I were talking before um, I hit record about your 
kind of social media fast. Do you want to share about that here? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I am in a season right now where I have been putting myself out there a lot for the last few months and weeks um, with launching the book. And it's been almost a constant thing to be on Instagram, on Facebook, posting, checking on things, answering DMs. And it got to the point for me where even though I really felt like that was a good way of stewarding this book and making sure that I did everything I could to get it out there, um, it actually feels like now I'm supposed to take uh, a little bit of a step back, which logically doesn't make sense. But I find with the Lord, it's not always the logical answer that he is giving. And it's for me in response to his voice. I really sense that he's asking me to step back for a time. I don't know how long. I don't think it will be um, an extended period of time. But at this point, I'm just eager to obey because I've learned over the last you know, 13 years of pursuing this dream that God does not measure success in our results. He measures it in our obedience. And so when we say a quick yes to what he's leading us to do, I believe that is success with him. And that is where we build trust and intimacy with him and show him that we are faithful in the little things and can be trusted with more. So all of this, I'm just reminding myself as I think, why am I going off social media again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're literally recording just 10 days after your book launched. And yeah. I think the world would say, you are crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But you're listening to your father. And so that's probably going to look crazy to the rest of the world. And I think he, you know, there's that verse that talks about like he uses what isn't to make it what is. That's not the exact wording of it, but um, it's like this whole idea of like, it might look like the best strategy is this, but the kingdom strategy is often the opposite of what looks like the best strategy to the world. Again, requiring great trust. Yes. <laughs> Father. And knowing ultimately I couldn't do this if I didn't have a revelation of who I am as his daughter and my value and my worth apart from anything that I do or produce. And that's something I didn't know really in my heart just a few years ago. And so I wouldn't have been able to step away with such peace because I would have felt like, oh no, like my value is really attached to that number on my social media feed or that level of engagement that I'm having with my audience. And and now I know like, that's, that's not where my value lies. Even if the whole mm -hmm. thing blew up and fell apart, like I would still be a daughter mm -hmm. and that's I would still, huge. yeah, I would still have my value and worth in that identity. I love that you said that was kind of the first thing that you needed to know to be able to walk forward in that confidence that you're yeah. a daughter of the King. I mean, what mm -hmm. more is there? What else matters if that's true? Right. And it's like some, so many of us, we live as though we're servants in a way, not that we aren't servants, we are, but we live as though we're slaves, I guess, mm -hmm. in the household of a master who um, is just giving us the scraps and the leftovers and we need to work to impress. And if, if we impress him, then he'll give us more. And that's just not the reality as a daughter we are we're seated at the table with him and there is so much abundance before him and we can rest in that he has everything we need and all we need to do is stay close to him and respond when he calls us forward or when he pulls us back or when he asks us to do this for the kingdom or when he asks us to not do anything like, you know, it's in that relationship. And that's why I talk about the intimacy. It's in that intimacy that we know how to move as a daughter. Well, in that light, can you talk about just any disappointment or failure that you have struggled with along the way as you've been on this journey? For sure. Um, there have been a lot of things that have felt like setbacks and failures. Um, 
particular, particularly in this book launch journey, at one point I was with an agent, a literary agent. And so I was on the path towards having my book be traditionally published, which is kind of the the goal for most writers. And we spent months, you know, preparing my proposal and getting everything set and, and pitching it to publishers. And there was one particular publisher that was very interested. And I had a phone call with the heads of all their teams and it had kind of jumped through all the hoops that they had. And we were at the final step expecting an offer. And at the last minute they pulled out and, um, and then I, after that, there was just more no's and I ended up having to not go that route of traditional publishing. And that felt like a big failure. That felt like the end of the road for that book. Um, and it was hard to keep going after that because, you know, that validation would have been huge in just affirming that this was a good idea and that it was worthwhile. And, um, I also probably would have reached so many different people than I can on my own with the help of a publisher. So that was definitely um, a hard, a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> so how long ago did that happen? So that would have been, I mean, this whole journey started two and a half years ago. So that would have been, um, I think about a year, a year into the process, or maybe a year and a half was when it all kind of fell through. So. Wow. And so then what happened? How did you recover from that? Yeah. So then I basically said to my agent, like, what's the next step? And she was like, well, there is no next step with me. And I was like, shoot. Okay. (laughs) So we parted ways amicably. And she said to me, you know, if you ever have another book idea, send it my way. Um, we have a great relationship, but, um, then I, began to pursue different publishing, self-publishing options. And my first book, I self-published. And so that was the way I ended up going with this one as well. And so now looking back, can you see like, oh, there were some things that I needed to learn or God wanted to teach me in that? Or what What do you feel like he was doing there? Or do you even know yet? I I don't know yet, but I can see certain things where I go, huh, if I would have been with a traditional publisher, for example, my book is very visual. It's a full color book with photos on almost every page and different design elements that are creative and very untraditional. And I think had I gone with a traditional publisher, I would not have been able to end up with that kind of final product that I did. Um, and I was able to have total creative control and the book that I now hold in my hands is exactly how I envisioned it in my head. Mm. So I don't know that that would have been possible had I gone with a traditional publisher. Yeah. I mean, what I've seen of it, it's beautiful and it is very unique looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was really part of my vision was, you know, teen girls, young women were growing up in this like Instagram world and were very visually stimulated. And I wanted it to be something that would just keep drawing them back in so that they could read the stories and hear the truth, but have it be very appetizing (laughs) almost for them. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of my vision. Yeah. for the book. Mm-hmm. Well, let me give you a minute to talk a little bit more about the book and who it's for and um, you know, anyone listening who might want to sure. grab a copy. Who- yeah. So the concept of the book is it's 14 different authors who wrote a letter to their younger selves sharing about a struggle they went through and a truth they wish they would have known that could have helped them through that struggle. And then I expand on every letter to make it into a full chapter, just kind of talking about the concepts and truths that they Um, you know, introduced in their letter. And then there's journaling and reflection questions and song suggestions and scriptures for further study at the end of every chapter. And the book is written for young women. And I would say that would be anywhere from, you know, I have 12 year olds that are interested in the book that their moms are buying it for them all the way up to 20 year olds. The concepts really are, um, because it's story-based, it really applies to so many women. And I even have friends that are in their 30s and 40s that are reading it and getting a lot out of it because they are really drawn to that concept of 
what would these women tell their younger selves? You know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's something that can be used kind of as a personal devotional type book, but it can also be used like in a group setting as like a small group study or that sort of thing. Those of you listening, go find Heather. Oh gosh. Orzma. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> On Instagram, there's some incredible images of it there. If you want to check that out, since it is such a visually appealing piece. Yeah. Well, Heather, can you talk about just any scripture that is personally encouraging to you in this season? Definitely. Um, You know, first of all, I come back to the word of God and we all know this, like his word is living and active, but it's amazing to me every time how when you come back to a scripture that you've studied over and over and over again, it speaks to you in totally different ways every single time. And this is one of those for me, the whole chapter of John 10 is probably one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And I actually think I might write a book on John 10 one day. That's how much I love it. But this whole concept of the sheep knowing the voice of the shepherd. And I already kind of alluded to this about how intimacy and hearing God's voice are such a key part of pursuing my God dream. But um, the verse that really impacts me is verse three, when it says that the sheep listen to his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And then verse five says, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And this is kind of my goal is to tune in and know the voice of the shepherd so well that as soon as I hear the voice of the stranger or the enemy, I immediately turn away and run away from that voice. Because the reality is now I still allow that voice sometimes to play over and over again in my head and my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And all that is doing is stealing life and joy and abundance from me. But to be like a sheep where I would just know immediately that's a stranger, that's not a voice I know and run away from it, Mm -hmm. that that is something that I'm continuously working and growing towards. I love that visual too, that this like instantly, like you, I made me think about my young children, like, Mm -hmm. you know, if they heard a voice of somebody calling to them that wasn't me or their dad or their grandparents, like, yes, I would want them to run the other way. Yeah. So. Well, and I think we sometimes think like we have to be these like amazing intergalactic ministers taking over the world. And he's like, just be a sheep. Mm -hmm. Just know my voice. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking of you. I'm not asking you. I'm not even asking you to change the world. I'm asking you to follow my voice. Mm -hmm. And the byproduct of that will be the world will be changed. Right. Because it is so otherworldly that we yeah. turn away from the voices of the world and the stranger and the enemy. Well, and the That's only it. the only time that the enemy ever has power is when we agree with him. So mm. imagine if every person, every Christian refused to ever agree with a lie from the enemy. He would be powerless. Mm. And I've been teaching my kids this lately. Like I've just been trying to like pare it down really simply. Like sometimes my daughter will say like, I'm a bad person. You know, she makes a mistake and she kind of criticizes herself. And I said, you know what? That's not true. And when you agree with the enemy, then you're actually giving him power in your life. But if you disagree with him and if you say, nope, that's not true, then you take away his power. And this concept has kind of resonated. My kids are like six and eight and it's resonating with them and they're reminding each other of it even now Mm. that like we actually get to choose whether or not he has power in our lives. That's awesome. I'm going to quote you on that. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so, I mean, even my four-year-old is like, well, I'm not good at that. Right. It's like, wait, who told you that? Mm -hmm. You know? Because yeah. I that's not what I see. That's not truth. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Well, and maybe this answers my next question of the advice that you would give to other women who are 
considering taking a step forward toward their dream? Or maybe you have another piece. Yeah, no, I think one of them would be what we just kind of touched on there. And that is just be aware of who and what you're giving your agreement to. Mm -hmm. When a friend speaks life over you and reminds you of the gifts that you have and the value that you have. So often we are quick to brush those words off or say, oh, well, it's just Christ in me, which is true. But in some ways we deflect from actually saying, you know what? Thank you. And I agree with you because when we agree with the truth, we empower that truth to become reality in our lives. And I think we miss it sometimes because we're we think we're being humble, but really we're we're not agreeing. We're not fully allowing that truth to come alive in our lives and take root and bear fruit. So I would say, you know, um, be conscious of that, and then in the same breath, be conscious of when you are agreeing with the lies and and be quick <laughs> once you recognize that to. Um, to find the truth, to replace that. And um, yeah, I think that our mindsets affect our, our actions a lot more than we realize. Pursuing our dreams kind of starts in our beliefs, not necessarily our actions. Absolutely. I would totally agree with you on that because we can't even figure out what steps to take if we don't know what we believe. Mm-hmm like all over the place. <laughs> if we, right. And you know. it's kind of like that whole thing, the world would kind of say like, what's your why, uh-huh. you know? And it's like, okay, well figure out what your why is. If your why is just like, I want people to see me and value me and love me. Well, the, the reality is, is that you're already seen, loved and valued. You already are. You don't have to work for love. You already have it. So work from love, work from value, work from significance. And then all of a sudden our why becomes, well, I want the people around me to experience that love, value, and significance as well, or fill in the blank with whatever it is that you feel called to bring into the world. And that is a why that will carry you through all the failures and all the setbacks and all the struggles because it's bigger than just you. It's, Absolutely. it's the heart of God for, um, the world to really come to see him and come to see the potential and the fullness that he's offering in their lives. It's all been very like hard won, you know, like it's mm-hmm. years of years of the trials and years of the anxiety and years of believing false, false things. And and I'm still, you know, there's still so much that I'm learning and growing in and that I, I still want to, um, <laughs> certain lies I still need to break up with. Um, but, <laughs> but we're in process, right? <laughs> totally. Totally. And yeah. I think that gives hope too, to like, if you're in a struggle or a rough time, like this is where the Lord molds and shapes you and draws you closer to himself so that you can live more in truth than in lies. So yeah, I feel like there's, there is absolutely fruit that comes out of those hard seasons. I agree. And I think when we're in those struggles and that mess, it's easy to think like that, um, you have to feel shame or Mm -hmm. to feel like we're doing something wrong. And I agree with you completely. It's in those places where God is growing our character and growing us internally so that we can actually sustain the growth and the blessing and the fulfillment of those dreams that is coming our way. Because if we don't have the character, then those blessings could actually crush us. Mm. And I know that he doesn't want that for us. He wants us to be burning as bright when we're 80 for him as we are right now. Mm-hmm. And there's so much character and internal work that needs to happen for that to be possible. Yeah. It's hard to submit yourself to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay, God, grow me. <laughs> yeah. Let's get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> we, he doesn't give us a choice. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask if there's been any um, other resources, um, books, podcasts, you know, Anything else that has been a good support to you that you would recommend to others? 
I recently started listening to a podcast called The Life Coach School by Brooke Castillo. Mm -hmm. And she, I don't think she's a believer, but so many of her concepts are very in line with um, scripture. And she talks a lot about emotional health and how to pursue emotional health and how to, she calls it self-coaching, like how to actually coach yourself through some of those thoughts that we get stuck on and how our thoughts impact our emotions and our emotions impact our actions. And um, that's been a resource for me in the last few months, not just because I'm pursuing life coaching, but I think just for anybody who wants to like win at life, if you want to just win at life (laughs) in general, (laughs) she's got a lot of great tools for the internal work of that. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay. And I know that you had something special that you wanted to share with the listeners as well. Something to um, help us hear God's voice. Yeah. So I have a free devotional called how to hear God's voice and it's um, 30 different devotionals that will be sent to you each week. And it just gives you different scriptures and stories of how God speaks to us still. And also creative questions that you can ask God. And it just really encourages us as believers to spend as much time listening as we do talking, you know, because prayer can become like kind of a one-way conversation for us sometimes. And we just talk and talk and talk and tell him all the things and ask him all the things and then we're done. And this, this devotional is really an invitation to to stop and listen and and wait to hear what he might want to say in response to all of the things that we're sharing with him. That's awesome. Okay, and where can we find that? So you can find that on my website, which is heatherborsma.com. And just at the top of the thing, there's a little bar that you can put your email address in and then you'll start getting the weekly devotional. Awesome. Great. Heather, this has been so rich. Like I've just loved having this conversation with you and, um, wish we could have had it earlier, like six months ago. (laughs) Yes. But our, our meeting has been over long overdue. Long overdue. (laughs) And maybe we'll get to talk again in the future. I I hope at least. Yes. I would Um, love that. That would be great. You'll have to let me know if you ever travel to Colorado for a speaking gig. Oh, man. I hope so. Let, <laughs> let's just say that that's going to happen. Okay. After, <laughs> I'm going to agree with that happening. Yes, me too. <laughs> oh, that'd be so oh, fun. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me and just for creating a space for these conversations and encouraging women to pursue their God-given dreams in a way that isn't about hustle and results and, you know, trying to gain something, but rather um, from that place of understanding who we are and from the kingdom perspective, I think it is such a powerful and important message. And I know so many women are being impacted by it. So thank you for having these conversations. Likewise. I feel like we're, we're running this race together and Mm -hmm. it's fun to look over and, and see you doing that as well. Yeah. Um, Can you wrap us up um, with just talking about how this experience of, you know, going through these struggles and learning to listen to the voice of your father, like how has all of that changed you? The biggest change I see in myself is I used to feel like I was valuable only when I was producing a measurable result. And that could be even as small as like, I baked muffins today and I cleaned my house. And so even though I was feeling awful, I did something and I can see the results and that makes me valuable. And now I'm able to, and still struggle, but I am now able to, you know, have a day where I literally just sit around, not because I want to be lazy, (laughs) because I really actually hate being lazy. But if I have a day where I sit around because I'm sick or because that's, you know, I'm with a baby who's sick or whatever it is that causes me to not be able to do all the things I want to do. At the end of that day, I feel just as valuable as I did when my schedule was so full and I could see the results of all the things that I was doing. 
And so even though I still prefer the full schedule, (laughs) don't get me wrong, um, I now know in my heart that I, I'm just as worthy of his love and have just as much to offer when I can't do all the things as when I can. If you have ever wanted a roadmap for your dream, this was the episode for you. You guys, I can't even decide on my top three takeaways from this conversation with Heather. I feel like she was speaking over us like a big sister, pointing us to our father, reminding us of our adoption as his daughters, and painting a picture for us of true strength, devotion, and intimacy with Christ as we pursue our God-shaped dreams. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. I have been thinking about it and thinking about it ever since that conversation. Like, I seriously had 15 takeaways written down. It was so good. But I'm going to share just three with you today. Takeaway number one, that when she asked the Lord, what's the next step? His answer has always been intimacy to draw near to him. So if you're struggling, like she talked about, feeling like you have no roadmap and all the options on your plate, you're not sure which one to take, why not just take that message that he gave her to run after intimacy with Christ and then see what he shows you? Okay, takeaway number two, that God doesn't measure our success in results but rather in obedience. And this was super helpful for me. And she and I talked kind of offline after the conversation about this topic of hustle and the hustle shaming that often goes on among women in our busy world right now. And she said something I thought was so wise and, and you guys didn't get to hear this. So I'm just going to quote her, but she said that sometimes God might call you to hustle. And it's not in an earn your worth perspective or a competitive perspective, but rather kind of in this um, silent, intimate message of get busy and do what he's called you to do. And here's where I'm going to quote her. She said to me, he'll provide for the hustle he calls us to. So if that's what you need to do, then do it. Okay. And finally, takeaway number three, the importance of our mindset and that whole conversation about agreeing with truth and not agreeing with what's not true, not agreeing with the lies. So if God has called you to a dream, own it, speak his truth over it and over yourself and surround yourself with other women who will do that for you as well. There is so much power in truth. So don't minimize it, live it out. Okay, so that was so much fun. I just loved Heather. I can't say enough about that conversation. And I wanted to offer to you that there are some great ways to get involved in the Devoted Dreamers podcast. So if you are new around here and you have never heard of Patreon, I'm connected with this really cool website that helps creatives build community around the people who consume their content and at the same time garner support for their work. So this is basically a website where you just can pledge your monthly support for me and the show and get some cool things in return. And I'm trying to think of ways that I can connect you all as patrons to one another. And so I would love your suggestions about that if you want to join in the group. But right now, it's there's no better time to get involved. And the challenge that I'm putting out there is that if you have listened to just one episode and it has impacted your life and if it's encouraged you toward Jesus and if it's helped you step forward in the midst of fear or reminded you to trust in the one who made you, would you consider joining the patrons, this tribe of devoted dreamers with a $5 monthly contribution this month. I am so grateful for the support that you all have offered, which has enabled me to continue doing this podcast, even in the midst of a really difficult financial season in my family. So you can learn more about how to join and and hear a little bit extra from me about it. It's at patreon.com slash devoted dreamers podcast, or in most of your listening apps, you can just click the button that says support this podcast. 
And yet another way to connect with some dreamers that are also Devoted Dreamers listeners, we'd love to meet you in the Facebook group. It is a place to find community with other like-minded women who love Jesus. You can share ideas, ask for suggestions. You could like run things past us and say, hey guys, here's, what do you think about this? Like how how I'm going about this dream? Like what, what suggestions do you have? So come join us. Meet us over in the Facebook group. We share our challenges and successes and we support one another along the way as we pursue our dreams. You'll find us in the Devoted Dreamers Insiders group. And you will also find show notes for this episode at MeritOnsa.com slash podcast slash 120. There you can connect with Heather, get links to all the resources she recommended, and her free 30-day devotional on how to hear God's voice. I love it. I think that'll be super helpful. And I might go grab one as well. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. And wherever you are with your God-shaped dreams, may you have the courage to take one step toward their realization today. Whoa.